It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And we've been traveling a lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, different festivals and events and so forth. And while we were out there, we had the camera handy, we asked some, some whiskey questions. Because why not? Exactly. So these answers were taken from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival mm -hmm. and also the Crowded Barrel Distillery's Bastards Ball. Our first question was one that we get asked kind of a lot, uh, and that is, what is your desert island whiskey? If you've watched the show for long enough, you know that I have some issues with this question, so we did have to set some parameters. First one being that it is not a magically refilling bottle, but it can be something vintage or rare, so it doesn't have to be something you can go out and get off the shelf right now. And here's what they had to say. I'm gonna take my Rebel Distillers collection. I know that it's not rare. I know that it's easy to come by, but it's just like, it's my favorite thing to get. And I think it's because it's like a bourbon for the people. 2015 birthday bourbon all the way. It is this beautiful, sweet banana pudding on a graham cracker crust. Just amazingness. Evan Williams, 23 year pre-fryer. We were in Chicago and they had a bunch of Dusties um, and it, it is one of my favorite. It, the complexity, it's like a flavor bomb. Cheesy gold foil. I feel like if you're on a desert island, you don't want high proof because like high proof on a desert island, you're gonna be dehydrated, you'll probably die. So it's like the perfect proof, perfect taste. Old Fangled Nodder Bourbon 10 year. It's just one of my all time favorite bottles that I've ever had and I wish I could find some more of it. Dark Cove Committee release. That was quick. The perfect combination of fruit and citrus with the uh, appropriate Ardbeg uh, peat. The Harbinger. 115 from Iron Root. It was really what turned me on to Texas whiskey and that's where I really fell in love so much that I've gone and volunteered at the distillery to help bottle and it's just a special one that I can always rely on. TX Bourbon, uh, purely because TX was the one that got me into whiskey. Their bourbon is just something that I keep going back to and it's delicious. So I'm gonna go with Red Breast 21 year. I mean, 12 has always been my favorite. I actually don't care for the 15 as much, but that 21, it's the sweet spot. I'm jumping on his parade, but I actually like the Red Breast 15 year, because I haven't had the 21 year. So, but I do like, I do like how divine the 15 just kind of melts away and and fades. I, I do enjoy it. That the Red Breast 15. Mm -hmm. Old Forester 150th. Batch 3. For a desert island, that's easier drinking, but still got the proof you want and the flavor. Let's go to Edwador, which was the first whiskey I ever had. It's kind of a holds a special place in my heart. So Edwador 10. Compass box. This is not a luxury whiskey. Dark chocolate notes, and it's really, really soothing. So my mind immediately goes Dark Cove from uh, Ardbeg, and mostly because it's amazing. But I'm also thinking like, I've got enough like sea salt going on if I'm on a desert island. See, I, I'm thinking way too practical about this. I'm like, what would mix with like coconut milk? Oh. <laughs> you know. So, you know what, I'm just gonna go Dark Cove and stop overthinking it. I think that'd be amazing. If you had asked me this earlier, I would have said Ardbeg, but now I'm gonna go with Bunaben. If I can get a moin, a monya, I'm gonna go with that, uh, which means peated. If not, I'm gonna probably go with the hard to get uh, Bunnahaven 12 cask strength. It's gonna be among my top 10 for the year. Give this a lot of thought, and since it's not a magically refilling bottle, I want to go quantity without sacrificing too much quality. So what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be a 175. It's gonna be Wild Turkey 101, but it's gonna be from like the 60s or 70s. They had just a certain quality back then. It was more of a caramel bomb, caramel bomb, whichever you prefer. Had a little bit of that vintagey funk. The 101 proof is gonna be a great proof. Uh, I feel like it's gonna be high enough to satisfy the proof found in me, but not so high to where if I'm drinking it on particularly hot island days, that I would be oh, like, this is this is a little little too hot. So I think the, the 101 would be what, what I would go with. I hate this question. <laughs> You'd think I'd want to take something lower proof if it's going to be a desert island, it's going to be hot. But if I don't have to go out and be able to get it right now, I think I would take the 2019 William Heaven Hill. That would be the one. It is like 134 proof, point something. But if it's going to have to last me the rest of my life, I can at least enjoy it on like a breezy evening. I don't know. That's probably what I would take. <laughs> All right, some, some good answers there. The second question we posed to the people was, what was your most disappointing whiskey purchase? Ooh. And the responses were this. 
Rowan's Creek is always my most disappointing whiskey purchase. It's super inconsistent, and it's just like the level down from Noah's Milk. It's like it's a huge drop off for me. Angel's Envy. Everybody talked it up. They said it was really sweet. It was a lot of people's gateway bourbon. I'm not a fan. Elijah Craig 18 year. It's too oaky for me or too wood, like too much wood. I thought I was gonna love it and this wasn't for me. Oh man. I'm never really sad no matter what. I can always find a way to be happy. And I think the most disappointing whiskey thing I've had was something that was sent to me. Not necessarily a purchase and I'm gonna be nice to them because they sent it to me, but I've been happy with every whiskey I've actually purchased. Ooh, uh, some stuff from Texas. I, I had really high hopes for it. It was a single barrel, it was a store pick. It had all the right stuff, barrel proof. Uh, had some decent age on it. It was just not good. The Jameson Coffee. I, I like most of their other finishes. The, the stout is really, really good but the coffee did not work for me. The most disappointing was Johnny Walker Red. Terrible, <laughs> tasted awful. Granted, I was not into smoke at that point, but uh, yeah, Johnny Walker Red label is, uh, I will never buy that again. Biggest regret whiskey was the TX Sherry. Not a huge Sherry fan, but I was like, I like their TX Port, I like other TX products, but then it was just this weird tannic funk that I just couldn't get past. Heaven's Door. When it, inside the box it had the uh, Dil Dylan lyrics inside the of it. Year, the 10 year. yeah. I was all hyped up about that from a couple of my buddies, and I got it, and I was like, I mean, so not terrible, but just I was expecting something. Kapow! You know, when I really started buying stuff and, buy, and buying bourbons and trying to think, trying to find rare stuff, I heard about Old Tub, and I saw it at a place. I'm like, oh, Old Tub! I bought four bottles, thinking it was going to be on like it was going to be on some kind of a allocation, and I got home like. Oh, it's gonna go good in a Diet Coke, maybe, but... I mean, most people might not have heard about that, about it, because I'm from Denmark. If I recall, it's called Brown, brown Style. Um, it has a really good nose, but unfortunately, it doesn't come through on the palate. So there's a, a Chinese whiskey called Go Along. And uh, I bought it specifically because I'm like, oh, never done Chinese whiskey, and I like to do everything. So bought that. I looked into it after buying it. It was $100. And you could tell because it had a big old box and the, the uh, decanter whatever bottle looked really cool and it I found out later it's Australian it's shipped up to China and then they throw it in their factory or whatever for like a couple of years and then they call it a five-year-old Chinese whiskey it's called glyph molecular whiskey um, but however I would say it does improve when you pour it down the drain available at your uh, local hardware store it's actually batch one of King of Kentucky one of the single barrels I know, I know, oh, quit clutching your pearls. It was uh, something I stood in line for, hours, paid over $300 for it. It was it, it, bad, it was bad. And universally, when we pass around to friends, recognize that yeah, it was not a good single barrel. And then we hear all these people like, oh, King Kentucky is one of the best contenders of the year, da 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 and I'm like, what? Since then, we've had several uh, several bottles, not had it, but pours from different um, different single barrels, and we agree, it is actually amazing. But that particular one was my most disappointing. My most disappointing purchase ever was like right as I was getting into whiskey. It was the first expensive bottle I had bought. I got a Rhetoric 21 year. I love the label, and it was 21 years, right? And it was like 120 or $140. And I got so excited, and I was like, I'm gonna buy it and save it for a special occasion. Two years later, I opened it on a special occasion, and it was disappointing. <laughs> it was too much oak for me, and it just, I don't know. I think that, for me, that's past the point of diminishing returns when it comes to age. So that one was a bummer, because I held on to it for so long. Okay, before we get to our last question, we want to pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the, both of the t-shirts that we're wearing, hats, hoodies, because it is uh, becoming sweater weather. We also have bottle cut candles, challenge coins. We have the, uh, the barrel stave coaster and cigar holder back in stock. Many other goodies at whiskeyambitions.com. It didn't feel like sweater weather, Chad, at both of these festivals. Nope, but it's that's, coming. Eh, it's, it's coming. It'll be here eventually. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash itsbourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That is where we release our exclusive barrel picks. We have a handful more coming out this year. Very exciting stuff. Uh, and that's where you get another round, exclusive after the episode stuff with Chad and I and discounts to Whiskey Ambitions and more. There you go. Okay, well, let's hear about this third question. It's a little chilly in here, Chad, because mm -hmm. the answers to that last question 
portion. Some of them very cold. Ouch. <laughs> That's all right. No love for some of those bottles, but okay. I'm happy to say that our last question is a bit more positive. Mm -hmm. uh, is what's been your most pleasantly surprising whiskey purchase? So let's hear it from them. I'm gonna stay in the, the Lux Row category again. I'm gonna say Rebel 100 for 20 bucks. Like, I don't know if there's a better value on the market than that, that bourbon. 1910 Old Forester. It's the perfect amount of smoky, sweet, sipping bourbon. If, if I could only have one bourbon, that would be it. Evan Williams, uh, single barrel. Uh, just the regular, um, it's a great price point, a good pour can have it every day and can find it. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about this. Come back to me, pass. Uh, pass. pass. I was doing so well. Metallica's bourbon, the blackened, didn't think I would be saying that, but it is legitimately really good. Uh, I think because the late Dave Pickerel was working on it, God bless that man. And he always put out amazing whiskey and I'm glad Metallica didn't just slap their name on some crap bourbon and uh, they actually put out a good product. Now, is that the cast strength, the regular 90 proof? That was the regular 90 proof. Wow. Yeah. I, was, I was really surprised. Wow. <laughs> Probably some of the SMWS releases. You know, their names are unique, so I can't remember exactly which one it was. But no, I do remember. Age to perfection. It lived up to everything I could have hoped for. Lafroy Cargis uh, Triple Wood. It's a special release and it is cast strength, smoky scotch, but it wasn't like the smokiness. You got so many flavors that just lingered. It was just <laughs> so special. Probably Writer's Tears. I bought that thing. You know, it'll taste like, you know, just standard Irish whiskey. And it really doesn't. It's got a lot of green apple to it. It tastes like tea, like black tea. Really, really good. Johnny Drum Private Stock. Thought it was delicious. You know, I, I was actually surprised as I got the Centenary. It came in such a fancy box. It had like a cloth in it. And I was like, well, it's just got to be too much marketing. But I, it, was, it was like surprisingly better than average. I was like, oh, that was pretty good. It's usually the smaller ones. Like I was really surprised by some of the uh, choices that we had with the 12 days of Texas whiskey, like Andalusia. And some of those really surprised me. I could suck up and say Penelope Toasted, which I just got in the mail, but I don't know. Actually, also a compass box. Uh, the first no name they made. The smoke was more intensive but still pleasant than I expected. So, the first thing I'm thinking is Bunabin 12. Um, Bunabin 12 is way better than what you would think, especially given the price and just kind of what it is. Like, it's, it's a good daily sipper, but it's also complex enough that if you think about it, you're going to pick out some cool stuff. Either it's something that I've recently had uh, from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Cast drink, nacho filtered, no added, no added coloring, you know, and I've had a lot of them uh, recently, but no one in, in particular jumps in my mind. Um, but when you compare the market, uh, you know, that with nacho filtering, no added coloring, um, and uh, cast strength and the price range, there's nothing going to meet. Now, I know that's going to be challenging for viewers uh, because they're not going to be able to run to the store and, and, and get one of those. Um, I got to say, Available here in Texas, it's going to be an Andalusia Heavily Peated. Probably another one of my top 10 uh, for the year. Absolutely fantastic. For surprisingly good, I usually kind of gravitate towards something that I didn't pay too much for. I think back to, uh, well, it's just called Rebel now, but Rebel Yell 100, so the 100 proof. It was like $17, even a little bit less. 100 proof, weeded bourbon. It punched above its weight class in all categories. Great for a wheater, but it didn't exactly drink like a typical wheater. And I used it to blind a lot of my friends, and they always guessed wrong. They're like, well, it's a rye bourbon. No, it costs around $50. No, it doesn't. It's a 115 proof. No, it's 100. And it, it kind of stumped everyone. And I'm like, this little champ, this, you know, the, the, the little underdog. I don't no? think I have an answer for that. Okay. Not an easy one. Skip. Now, Sarah, we saw there, uh, you said skip. I did. Which we skipped, but Listen, now I, we're back here. So do you have an answer? I do, but like, can I just say that I was hot and tired and we were drinking and I didn't want to be on the camera anymore, right? right? Yeah. But fine, I guess I'll answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to go back to like our very first episode and say Evan Williams 1783. I think for the value, that is an extremely surprising bottle, especially now that they've raised the proof. 
to 90 proof. Ah, yeah. You the know? bottle redesign and, and, the, and the proof hike <laughs> and the price didn't go up that much at all, if right. any. I still think it's a great value. So oh, okay. that one did shock me. I did not think it would be my number one. Well, that was fun hearing yeah, from all of them. I like to was. poll the community because, mm -hmm. you know, we get stuck in our bubble sometimes, as I'm sure some of you all out there do with yeah. your friends and your all's opinions. So I like to hear, you know, I like to hear from, from the audience. And we would like to know what you all would like for us to ask, uh, you know, we still got a, another festival to go. Oh, what questions true. would you like answered from the whiskey community abroad? And Let us know down there. Also, throw your answers to these questions in the comments because I still sure. need to know more. Yes. That's where we gotta leave it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, whiskey community. Until next time, drink more bourbon.